the thing is, is that, as I pointed out earlier, you cannot distinguish between um, desires that you, the choices that you are making to change your desires, and choice, decisions being made for you. Uh, decisions happening to you, I guess. Well, you sort of can. The How? Little, well, we just, you can question your motives. You no, no, no. We, deci why. we decided earlier on that it's indistinguishable. Much the same way that reality is indistinguishable from the illusion of reality. From the point of view of if the observer, they have no way to distinguish between the two, which makes them equivalent. Can you tell the difference between free will, as we're, we're describing it, and the illusion of free will? No. Uh, hang on. I'm uh, well uh, because I'm having trouble parsing the question. Okay. Uh, uh, may I? May I comment? Okay. Um, I think you can, Dennis, given your your um, view on things, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it, it it from as I understand it, from your perspective, whether I mean the 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 existence of an illusion of free will is completely irrelevant. Right. Right. You're looking purely at the mechanics. Yes. And as far as you're concerned, again, everybody listening, I don't agree with that, <laughs> but I do understand where he's coming from. As far as you are concerned, you, when you look at the mechanics, you can tell that there isn't free will. Right. It's and just, so if there is an illusion of yeah. it, it doesn't matter. That's how you know that it's an illusion. Right. That, Adam, that's, uh, where my, whim, that's where Dennis is coming from. Whim is not a part of natural law. I mean... Atoms and molecules do not operate according to whim. Uh, I think well, you're I confusing levels here. Uh, Adams... Hey, just, just a second. Matt, would you mind updating the time thing so we know how much we've gone over? Well... Yep. Thanks. I, levels. Levels. Uh, you're, well, you're, let, let me finish what I was saying. Okay. Uh, and there are a lot of things that atoms and molecules don't do that uh that the things they are made I, I mean that the things that are made of atoms and molecules do do like for instance atoms and molecules don't reproduce in fact sure, atoms and sure. molecules are never either created or destroyed but right. there are stuff there are things that are made of atoms and molecules like people uh which you can meaningfully say are created no, I mean, sorry, bad word, not created. Yeah. But do they're just re it's just a rearrangement of atoms and molecules. So made. now you're previously going existing. The, wait, word made instead of created. So, so now you're going beyond Arranged. the point that there is no free will, and you're going and you're saying instead there are no people. No, there's people. People are defined by a collection of atoms and molecules. Exactly. Sure. So I what. I came into existence at a certain point. Sure, time. sure. You agree with that? Yeah, sure. Okay, so it's not reasonable to say that because atoms and molecules don't do something, uh, nothing that's made of atoms and molecules does that thing. Uh, I mean, atoms and molecules aren't uh, don't come into existence, but but people come into existence. Right. Atoms okay. and molecules okay. don't have don't make choices, but people do. Right. right. So do computers. Yes. Somebody else jumped in. Jump in. Okay. You you said your thing? Yeah, pretty Matt, much. do you have something? Go ahead. Oh, oh. me? Uh, well, uh, I, I, I think me, uh, part of it is, 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 as somebody pointed out in the chat room, that the definition of choice has changed. Um, okay. Where well, okay. When, when, when I say choice, I'm talking about the mechanical process of choosing between... No, Option. actually what you're saying is that there's a mechanical process that has only one possible outcome, and there is no choice. It's an illusion of choice. Um, well, but look, computers think, make choices. I think I can clarify this. And yet they're I, completely in, mechanistic. In my role as moderator and facilitator, there, um, when I turn the crank on the gearbox, right, the gears are going to go around, and exactly one pattern of, of activity is going to happen, right? That is def Dennis's definition of a choice. Purely mechanistic has only one outcome. That well, I don't doesn't agree mean. With that I, I know, I know, I'm just clarifying. 
Dennis' def- definition of the word choice does not... He, he, he grants that a process occurs. It doesn't include he a does, choice. He does not... But, but, when, but th- there's a thing that in common language we call a choice, and it's that process. Dennis does not deny that the process occurs. What he denies is that the process... Um, could ever have any more than could, one outcome. Could ever have any more than right. one outcome given a particular given set of conditions. The, given the circumstances. If the universe were played over from the Big Bang, we would be in exactly the same position. Correct. Okay. Saying Correct. and doing now, the exact now same there thing. Now, there was a, there now, was a Grant, let me, in which let me give, deny that the word choice applies. Let me give a caveat. granting it within that. Let me give a caveat condition. to that. The universe is, and I got this word from Paul, stochastic, in that, that would be Paul it Wilson. is a, Paul Wilson, yes, it is a, Mechanical, it is clockwork. I mean, the universe is Newtonian, uh, but, it is, and not Matt, okay? but it is modified by the introduction of random events, quantum events. Sure. And it accommodates those events. So, the universe is essentially deterministic, but not predictable. Soft determinism. I guess that's what you'd call it. Okay. There have been arguments for free will that are based on quantum that's, that's random how I quantum the fluctuations. Yeah. And I think they're all crap because yeah. that, that all, you can't get from a random event to a conscious choice. I, I think this, mm-hmm. let's take this opportunity to all agree on something, right? What's we that? all agree that whether or not, the, whether the universe is, uh, uh, whether physical law is totally deterministic or involves some random elements, uh, has no bearing on the free will question. Right, agree. Whether, whether it's that distinction you're is either not a, relevant. Right, you're either a and slave I, to a machine or a die roll. Randomness a doesn't right. make doesn't open up possibilities for free will that weren't already there. I'm not there. really sure I agree with that. Really? Okay, why not? If if the universe was totally deterministic, mm-hmm. uh, I would say that. Even even the appearance of free will wouldn't be free will anymore. Like, uh, if we were all characters in a book, mm-hmm. and the book was already written, right? Uh, and it was already published, and it's never going to change, and I'm currently experiencing chapter 27. Right. Much like um, the condition you'd have if God was, if there was a God and it was omniscient. Yes. Right. Right. Or much like the condition you'd have if we were talking about what happened yesterday. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm not free to change the things that happened yesterday. But, but I am was free. yourself at the time free? I don't see how the fact that you're looking at a record of events makes any difference. Well, if if the universe is already written in a book, uh, then I... Everything that's happened so far is effectively written in a book. Are you saying everything that's happened so far, therefore, was not free? Uh, I would say that it was free at the time because it wasn't written at that point. Right. He's talking about the difference between a book right. written for future events and right. chronicling the past. If, that's if there different. were a book that were written already... Uh, right. Then I don't. I think it would be less meaningful I, to say that I'm free to do what I want, since it's already written what I'm going to do. I, I think maybe there is a valid distinction between freedom and non-freedom with your uh, with that analogy, except uh-huh. that you're looking at the wrong one. Mm-hmm. I think the the valid distinction is: did the characters in the book generate the choices that are described in the book, or is the book merely some outside party's um, uh, you know, imposed description of events in which the characters actually had no part. Yeah, that for sure would be a valid distinction. I'm not sure that the that the the fact that it is a, a, a book really matters.